Welcome to the live nativity at St. Mark's. Scene one, the innkeeper. Bethlehem is crowded with people coming home for the census. Rooms have been booked for months. It's late at night when the innkeeper opens the door and finds a young couple standing in front of him. The woman is nine months pregnant and she and her husband look exhausted. They've walked 100 miles from Nazareth over rough and rocky terrain to get there. The innkeeper is confronted with a dilemma. Imagine him pulling the door open a bit and hastily consulting it with his wife. Is there any space anywhere? There are three people in each bed and people sleeping on all the couches. There are air mattresses covering the living room and dining room and bedroom floors. What to do? They whisper back and forth, racking their brains, trying to come up with a solution. Suddenly, he thinks of the stable out back. It's not much, but it's protected from the wind. The body heat of the animals makes it a warm place, no matter how cold it gets outside. He flings open the door and welcomes the couple with a big smile. He explains he doesn't have much, but he has possibility. A stable. Will it suffice? It does. Pops. Scene two. Mary and Joseph traveling. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth. Luke, the first chapter, 26 uh, through 37 verses, chapter 2, 1 through 7. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a Galilean village of Nazareth to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph and the virgin's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning, you're beautiful with God's beauty, beautiful inside and out, God be with you. She was thoroughly shaking, wondering what was behind a greeting like that. But the angel assured her, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You'll become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called son of the highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his of his father, David. He will rule God's. He will rule Jacob's house forever. No end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, but how I have never slept with a man. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest hover over your body. Therefore, the child will bring you bring to birth will be called holy son of god and did not know that and did you not know that your cousin elizabeth conceived a son old as she is everyone thought called her barren and here she is six months pregnant nothing you see is impossible with god and mary said yes i see it all now i'm the lord's maid ready to serve let it be with me just as you say Then the angel left her. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. It was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to their own central hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judea, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son. Her firstborn, she wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. Pause. Scene three, shepherds in their field. Do not be afraid, I bring you good news. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Luke chapter 2, 8 through 20. There were sheep herders camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Do not be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town a savior who is Messiah and master. This is what you're to look for. 
a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheepherders talked it over. Let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angel had said about this child. All who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Pause. Move on to the next scene. Scene four, the nativity. Humble stable in the presence of donkeys and sheep that Jesus, son of God, came into the world as a tiny baby. There he lay, God clothed in human flesh, the savior, the king of kings, the Lord of Lords, and they called his name Jesus, for he would save his people from their sins. A poem, The First Christmas. It would have gone unnoticed in this sleepy little town, a couple in a stable, cows and donkeys all around. A single candle flickered. In the orange glow of its flame, an anguished cry, a soothing touch. Things would never be the same. They shook their heads in wonder, for they could not understand the puzzling dreams and omens and the spirit's stern command. So they rested there exhausted, husband, wife, and newborn son. History's greatest mystery had only just begun. And on a hillside out of town, rough men sat by a fire, startled from their gossip by a great angelic choir. They dropped their staffs, they gaped in awe, what was this wondrous thing? The angels would proclaim to them heaven's newborn king. They journeyed into Bethlehem. The spirit led them down to hold. He told them where to find him in this sleepy little town. They saw a tiny baby wriggling gently on the hay. They, they fell upon their faces. There was nothing they could say. Tears trickled down their wind-burned cheeks. Their doubts had finally passed. The proof lay in a manger, Messiah come at last. Pause. Scene five, wise men. Go find this child, leave no stone unturned. Matthew chapter two, one through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kinship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We are on a pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified. And not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religion scholars in the city together and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear, for you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. Overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod. So they worked out another route, left the territory without being seen, and returned to their own country. 
Thank you for visiting the live nativity at St. Mark.